Hello everyone. Uh, this is a talk about XCPNG. So this is more uh, uh, the, the story behind the project and not a technical talk. But anyway, uh, the title is Building an Open Source and Turnkey Virtualization Platform. So first, uh, I'm Oliver. I'm the uh, CEO and founder of Vates, a uh, company doing open source since uh, 2012. And I'm a sysadmin, I'm a former sysadmin, uh, doing a lot of Linux, BSD, and Zen stuff. Also, I'm the founder of Zen Orchestra and XCPNG project. You can find us on Twitter and here is the website of XCPNG project. So first, to be sure we are talking about uh, the right thing, um, the title was about a turnkey and open source virtualization platform. So what does it mean? So it means that a virtualization platform is not just uh, the hypervisor. It's the hypervisor, but also the network stack, the storage stack, and an API. So in the case of XCPNG, it's basically uh, Zen as the main engine, and open vSwitch for the network, SMAPI, which is uh, the, the storage stack uh, inside XCPNG, and finally Zappi, which is uh, the API for, for it. On top of that, you can put uh, Zen Orchestra, which is basically a web solution to manage uh, the, the platform. When I said turnkey, turnkey means that you just have to download the ISO and install it on your hardware. So it means you don't have to make some specific configuration to have your Zen running. You just, you know, download, put on the, on the stick, put on the uh, hardware, install it, and that just works. Plus, you got everything that you need uh, through the API. So it could be <coughs> using a client like the a CLI or a web UI. Anyway, every command is going through the API. So it means, for example, if you want to create a network, you don't have to do that manually, uh, SSH to the box and create you know, uh, a, a network uh, using OVS. No need to do that. You just tell the API, I want a network for my VM. And finally, when I said open source, well, we know what open source means, but I want to uh, just tell it's not about only the license. It's GPL v2, that's cool, but it's also uh, something that uh, having a, a really, really nice community. And nice, I mean by that, a lot of people coming from everywhere and working on the project, not just, you know, uh, uh, giving feedback, but also uh, improving the documentation, etc. And finally, uh, it's also uh, about the governance of the projects. When I mean open source, I mean also that all repo, all the doc, and the developments, it's completely uh, publicly accessible. So that's, for me, really important. It's not just a matter of the license. So this is just a view of a dashboard. So if you can represent what does it mean. So this is a web UI, Zen Orchestra on top of XCPNG, so classical stuff, you know, like Overt or Proxmox, whatever. So a bit of history for people here who doesn't know as any detail, so it's not new. Uh, it was, in fact, the first uh, open source hypervisor released uh, back in 2003. Uh, and then uh, Citrix acquired the company uh, doing Zen, called Zen Source, and Citrix decided to uh, launch uh, something called Zen Server, which is basically a virtualization platform. Uh, it was closed source at the time. And then uh, a bit later, Citrix decided to focus more on desktop virtualization. So, uh, it means uh, the products that are using Zen Server on top, but more, you know, for people accessing to their desktop, Windows desktop from a remote location. And uh, it means that Citrix is more focusing on that and not more on server virtualization. One year later, uh, the first time, um, the first release of XCP was done, and basically it was the open source version of Zen Server. And XCP means Zen Cloud Project, so you start to know about XCP, so you can imagine why it's XCP NG, because it's XCP new generation. Um, a few years later, Zen Server was open sourced, so it means the end of uh, the XCP project, because it was the open source thing, but now everything is open source, no problem. And this is when we started to work on Zen Orchestra, just to give you some, uh, some timing. Uh, in 2017, uh, Citrix decided to remove some really cool feature uh, inside Zen Server. So they decided to remove, for example, live storage migration and, and that kind of stuff. And all big features, uh, not in the hypervisor itself, because it's Zen, it's fully open source, but in the platform uh, won't be uh, open source in the end. So we decided 
just a few times later to, to start the XCP project, XCP NG project, to remove all those restrictions and to do uh, a lot more than just a fork. So you can ask the question uh, why we are doing that. Because you know it sounds a bit 2008 to, to fork a virtualization platform. Everyone is talking about the cloud and the containers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But on the field, uh, you know, uh, if you are not Netflix or a, a very large company like that, everyone is still using virtualization. And people want to have something that works, that's ideally open source, and that can scale. So, well, uh, our reasons to do that were multiple. First, Zen Server was a great tool, really a great tool, because it was a, a real turnkey platform. But uh, now we know the, the future is a bit closed source. Uh, sadly, there wasn't any developer community outside Citrix walls uh, because it's, it's more a commercial project for Citrix. Uh, also, Citrix had other priorities than, you know, working with the server virtualization world. So it makes sense for them, you know, to have other priorities. Not a problem, but the problem with that is uh, there is no convergence between people who want to make server virtualization and people who want to make desktop virtualization. Also, not all components were open to contribution. You know, uh, when you release, it's GPL compliant, you reach the table, but you don't have, you know, uh, the master branch. So it's really hard to contribute from some project inside it. So we, we saw a great opportunity to open everything and to allow people to work on that and to improve the project. Also, for us at the, as a company uh, working on Zen Orchestra, it's a good opportunity to grow the Zen ecosystem, you know, by not just having one platform, but another one which is more open and also be able to answer people's needs, not just on the management side, but also uh, on the layer which is um, on the bottom of Zen Orchestra. Uh, because now we can, you know, uh, having a common objective with both uh, software to go into the right direction to improve, uh, for example, some performances that are really important for us and also fix all bugs, etc., etc. But doing a fork uh, uh, of a platform is like forking a distro, okay? So it's not really easy. Just to show you, this is basically uh, uh, Zen Server or our XCPNG platform in, in that square. So it means you got a lot of components. So we are not forking every component. It, it, it wouldn't have made sense to fork Zen or Linux because they are fully open source. But the goal is to be able to uh, take the stuff, to understand how it works, and to build that in a more open fashion, in short. Okay? But <coughs> to do that, you really need to understand which component is talking to uh, other components, etc. So the interactions between all those components, uh, this is one of the challenges. So to recap, uh, the three parts, the three main challenges that we have to, to overcome. The, the first one, and maybe the, the, the most important one, at least at first, uh, is to get a, a good community working with us. So it means not to be only, you know, a small company doing some stuff uh, in our corner, but to be able to gather people around a project and to have people starting to do contribution and that kind of stuff. So we weren't, you know, the only company doing that. So this is one of the challenge. The other one is, as you may see, in the technical challenge. Technical challenge is we need to be able to fork that and to release something that works. Okay, so it's not just not getting the whole stuff. We need to understand how it works, and we need to also be able to demonstrate how it works and to improve it, to fix bugs, and also for people using Zen Server maybe to be able to migrate to our solution. And finally, to uh, is the adoption for Zen newcomers. For example, people who never had any experience with Zen, so it should be easy for, for them to use uh, XCPNG. And the last challenge is to have a really open project. Open, I mean by that, uh, to get uh, an open governance, for example, to be inside a foundation, or also the last part is to be uh, continue to work uh, for a long period of time. So it means uh, we need to have uh, on the corporate parts uh, a support business model, so uh, we can continue to pay a developer's team to work and to improve the product. So did it work? I have some answers. Uh, the first answer is uh, well. We did a Kickstarter last year, and the first objective was about only 6,000 uh, euros. So it was a low bar, but we estimated that 
we could take too many risks with that, so we will try, you know, with, to see if there is some interest in the community about doing that. And for this first goal, the objective was to release a, a kind of prototype. And we had other goals, but without thinking that uh, we will reach all of them. And finally, in less than 24 hours, so it's uh, uh, February to uh, March, okay, so it's one month. And in less than 24 hours, uh, we got the first goal, and then it continued, and we've seen that a lot of people were interested, in fact, to have a really turnkey or an open source virtualization platform. And in the end, even companies uh, uh, um, became sponsors by sending us money, not by, with the, the Kickstarter platform, but by sending checks or wire transfers. So in the end, it was more than this amount. And then it started, and it started really fast, because we did the first fork in April, basically uh, uh, exactly the same thing than Zen server, but without you know, the feature restriction. But then, for the next releases, we, we, we've been able to add new features. Um, for example, uh, we have been able, uh, in October, to also uh, follow the, the, the pace of Citrix release in Zen server, and be able to sign our, our RPMs, to add software red support during installation, to add new features. So, uh, it's really a, a fast-paced cycle. So today, uh, regarding the community and the project challenge that we had uh, in the previous slides, uh, we've got a lot of uh, people uh, who build a really, really vibrant community of people using it, uh, a lot of active users on the forum. So active, I mean by that, people with more than uh, uh, one post. Uh, we've got a lot of posts, a lot of threads uh, every day. Got a lot of unique downloads, so it's really a good sign that people are trying the product, are talking about the product. Plus, it's still really easy to upgrade from uh, a working Zen server. It means it won't erase your VMs. It will just, you know, like an upgrade, in fact. So we will reboot and you will be on XCPNG and it works. Um, we are now a member of Zen security pre-disclosure list, so it means uh, before the public knows, knows about some security features, we are, uh, you know, like Amazon or, or the big cloud providers. Uh, they have, in, in average, uh, 15 days to, to fix some problems. So we are inside that. So that's really helpful to be able to, to fix problems really fast before it's public. We are working to be inside a, a foundation. So it's not official, so I can't tell a lot more about that. But we are working on that to really have an open governance and not, you know, be the only company behind that. We want to, to, to gather other people around it. Uh, and also, as I said, no license or feature restrictions. So about the technical side, so as I said, we, we did a lot of stuff in one year. So we already, for example, fixed bugs in the upstream. In the upstream, I mean, for example, in Zen server, we discovered some bugs and we fixed them or we help uh, uh, Citrix developers to, to find the root cause of some problems. So it was really, really cool. Uh, we got a testing repo. That's really nice because it means uh, for people who want to, to, to try some maybe uh, cutting edge features or you know, like support of storage that weren't existing before without taking risks to put that into production so you can let the community to work with that. So that's really, really helpful. Uh, we got cloud stack compatibility. And finally, we embed the uh, Z standard compression uh, inside uh, XCPNG basically. Uh, it's an algorithm, a compression algorithm made by Facebook, which allows us to compress uh, faster and better than the, the existing algorithm uh, in Zen server, which is using JZIP. So we get a comparison of uh, backup time uh, in gray, light gray, uh, with, without compression. Then in dark, you get a uh, JZIP compression, and in red, with uh, Z standard compression. So we did a lot of performance improvement for making a backup of a VM. For example, when you export the VM, it's compressed with Zen standard. And it's really, really faster, up to six times faster than JZIP. So it means in less than one year, we were able to, to add really cool features uh, in a short amount of time. So what's next? So this year, uh, we want to have more firepower. And, and to do that, we are growing the, uh, the team working on that. So uh, we target to have up to six people working on it. Uh, we are working with uh, some uh, research labs and universities, so we found that uh, a reasonable amount of papers were done in France about Zen, so that's really interesting to, to work with a local university uh, knowing uh, Zen itself, so it can lead to interesting stuff. Uh, and we target a, a, a team about 20 people for the end of the year, if you count all the researcher and the engineers and the contractor. Again, it's a joint effort. 
Regarding the research and development, we had a lot of topics to cover because, as I said, there's a lot of room for improvements, and that's really great. Uh, you, you can see that we want to improve on any side of a virtualization platform. So we are targeting improvement on the storage side, on the network side, and compute side. And to do that with uh, some universities, so you have publication, that's really great because you have also uh, uh, benchmarks, uh, you have the data, so you can see uh, the, uh, the, the improvements that have been done into the research. So it's very, very, very a lot of different stuff, but to give you a quick example of one field that we are working uh, this year is to improve the uh, NVMe uh, drive, obtain drive. If you don't know those drives, those are 3D X points memory from Intel, which is really, really, really fast, a lot of high ups. But the problem is uh, the legacy storage design for a, a virtualization platform uh, were made uh, when HDD were there. So high latency and not really a lot of high ups. But then, if you decide to create a specific layer which is uh, thinner than the original one, you can uh, maybe reach uh, almost the bare metal IOPS of the hardware. So you need to do uh, a lot of improvement to, to go there, but uh, that's, that's doable. I mean, we got an architecture and we know the general direction when we, go, we need to go, but now this year we, we need to go to the next phase which is uh, a proof of concept and some benchmarks. And then if it goes well, then it will be implemented and again, pushed upstream because the goal is to push everything upstream. Also, uh, because as I said, it's a distro in the end, like a Debian or whatever, uh, we need to improve the thing. So uh, in XCPNG, like in Zen server, the DOM0, the privileged domain, is based on CentOS. So we need to have a platform like Koji to uh, automate the RPM build process. Koji is used by Fedora. Uh, we need to also make some automated QA and CI. So if, you, if we add, for example, a patch of something that ideally a platform should be able to tell everything is great, it's built, it works uh, automatically. So this will help the project to have more contribution because every time someone adds something, automatically it will be test. Also, the great thing about it is that you can have nightly builds for people who want to test really, really cutting edge stuff. Um, there's va various stuff, so uh, to improve the uh, mirror management when someone will become, uh, uh, want to become a mirror for a download XCPNG, there's a lot of uh, a project that are doing I think we, we will use a, a project done by, used by the uh, people behind uh, the uh, VLC projects. Okay, so uh, we can use a really interesting open source uh, project to help us about that. So also other features, but I won't you know, enter too, too deep inside the details. So, and to recap also, uh, regarding the Xanox side, um, it's a management platform, but more than that, you can do backup resource delegation, so it's not CloudStack or OpenStack, okay, but still it helps to manage your infrastructure up to, um, let's say, two or 3,000 VMs, and then if you have a large infrastructure, maybe, probably, uh, CloudStack or OpenStack will be better. But anyway, uh, we want to integrate more features uh, between the two, the two software because uh, this allows us to, to create really interesting uh, connection and to also innovate on uh, both interaction betwe between the two software. So we are working with both Zen Orchestra team but also the XCPNG team working uh, together on the ideas to, to push both projects into the right direction. So, how to help? Well, we, we got a really nice community, so if you want to, to just try it, download it, and then if you have any problems, to talk with people there. Uh, also, we are hiring, so if you are interested to work uh, on uh, system development like QMU or Zen or uh, that kind of stuff, even the kernel, or if you are uh, using or developing no camel, uh, because the API is in no camel, we're interesting, so just come to see me after the talk. Um, as a company, uh, there is a lot of interesting programs if you want to make research and developments uh, at the uh, uh, European uh, level. Uh, also, just in the end, using it uh, will be helpful because uh, more people using it, more hardware will be tests. So it can work from your, I would say, medium desktop machine up to your server inside the data center. But it was built in mind to run into, a, 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 let's say, a servers into a data center. So as you've seen, uh, there's a lot of stuff coming and the 
we did a lot with a small team and having a larger team will be really interesting and we hope to, to build a lot of new features and exciting features for, for this year. So stay tuned on the uh, xp.ng.org website to get all the, all the new stuff. And that's it. If you have questions, go ahead. Yep. Uh, how is now the cooperation uh, or the, the, the interaction with the uh, Citrix guys in the same server for for now, it's okay. Uh, what's the difference now with uh, uh, Zen Server Project? Right now, we tend to limit the fork because we are pushing upstream everything that we are adding. So, for example, for the ZSTD stuff, uh, we, we added that into the upstream because most of the tools inside Zen Server are open source. So, we can push, you know, for the uh, API, Zappi uh, on the GitHub, etc. So, we, we try to maintain uh, the smallest fork as possible, but drive innovation and maybe to. to to use our innovation faster than the Citrix cycle, which is different than ours because we don't have the same, uh, you know, priorities in the end. Will there also be like uh, merging upstream features back into? Yeah, yeah, merging features faster and 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 yeah, to be more flexible than than, than Zen Server uh, release cycle. Yeah, uh, yeah, there. So, so what, do, what do you mean is, is, does it work with CloudStack or? Uh, sorry, I didn't hear the, the. Does it work with OpenStack? OpenStack. Ah, OpenStack, yeah. Uh, we, we don't have OpenStack support right now because you know OpenStack can work uh, with uh, Zen Server on the bottom, uh, uh, CloudStack 2. Uh, uh, people at CloudStack already uh, help to make it compatible with it, but not yet at OpenStack. I, I don't know the current status at OpenStack right now, but uh, maybe you should ping some developers. It's, it's the same API, so it's not really complicated to adapt to it. It's just you know changing the name, a string, basically to, to have the support of it because it's exactly the same API. <laughs> Other questions? Yeah? When you say we, do you like, is it the, the XCPG community or more your company? Uh, uh, Are you the main driver of current work? Okay, so what the main driver for uh, uh, the XCPG project? Right now it's uh, uh, Vates, the company behind it. But for example, on the uh, Windows stuff like the Windows client and the driver, PV drivers, it was someone from the community. So the goal to be inside a foundation is to be able not to be the only company driving the project. We have a lot of people working on it. We want to have a lot of people on, into it and we, are, we have professional support on it, but it doesn't mean we'll be the, the only company to, to, to provide uh, improvement inside it. And, and the goal is to have more companies to, you know, to work with us. For example, we have uh, some people who would like to have, uh, for example, the VX line supports because they are using a big data center and they are ready to work with us to improve that. So it, it's not just something by white company. We don't want to be the only company behind that in the end. Uh, yes? Okay. Okay, so the question is the ability to use only uh, for smaller use cases for one server because, for example, Proxmox got uh, a web UI bundled directly with the uh, installation, so you just for one machine, it, it makes sense to have everything bundled. Uh, it's not the case for XCPNG. 
But yeah, you can deploy uh, Zen Orchestra relatively easily. Uh, um, if, if you just want a basic UI, we got a, a virtual appliance that's just ready to download and to, and to use. If you want to install it from the source, yes, you need a VM to, to make it work. But bundling a web UI directly inside it uh, uh, could be problematic for something that's made to be work in clusters, in pools. So uh, we are thinking about that, but there is no trivial solution to deliver something like that right now. Yes? Make s so sorry, make what? Flavor of uh, with a uh, uh, web UI, uh, okay. So the question is maybe to create a flavor of XCPNG with a web UI bundle inside it. Uh, <coughs> this is some stuff that we have discussed about already, so we are thinking about, about this. Oh, and by the way, uh, we got stickers, if you want, at the end of the talk. <laughs> Just thinking about it right now. Okay, that's it. Thanks a lot.